Okay. Is this decentralized? No. This is centralized by definition, right? Because <laughs> anything, so EOS says 21 people are in charge. Ashikov says 21 is no good. 50 is the right answer. 50. 50 centralized and 21 is centralized. From what I'm concerned, a fixed thousand is centralized too. What do you think of Hedera Hashgraph? I would take them seriously and then read their white papers and read their code if they weren't laden with patents. I have a policy. If you patent your work and there is an owner of your code, I will pretend like you don't exist. It's not only high throughput. I, I think that a lot of this game turns out to be centered around TPS numbers. TPS numbers are incredibly easy to fake. And if you want to sort of look for an example of this, ask, uh, ask the Hedera Hashgraph people for a demo. That we are going to go to where we are now, which is decentralized governance, utility, uh, growing decentralization over time as we get permissionless nodes, growing decentralization as we release our stake, which is the HBARs, the cryptocurrency. We will be on this path to becoming more and more decentralized until we are totally decentralized. This is the path that we will be following, and we'll be doing it in a way that is completely secure at each point along the path. We also have legal protections. We are patented and open review. We'll be open review, but we will not be open source. What that means is that everybody can run the software as part of the one true ledger, but if there's a split, then one of the two ledgers is illegal and one is legal. Well, that wouldn't work unless we could say which one is the true ledger, which comes back to the state proofs and the ledger ID. And so you have to be part of the one true ledger to be running a legal ledger. Now, people can run illegal ledgers, of course, but again, that discourages people from building on it because if you build on an illegal ledger, it may go away. With these services, you have smart contracts. Smart contract is a native service of our platform. Then on top of that, you build your, your various um, smart contracts and you can build as many as you want and they can do anything. They're written in a Turing complete language. It means they can do anything. But of course, they run more slowly than a native service would run. For example, we have the native service of cryptocurrency with the H bars, but you could also write a smart contract for an ERC-20. And the ERC-20 is doing the same thing as a cryptocurrency. But the native cryptocurrency is going to be faster than the smart contract, much faster. We can do thousands of cryptocurrencies per second. We're going to have, I think, 10,000 probably at launch and, and at OA, I mean. We'll throttle it down to 10,000. It's much faster than that already in our test nets. And we are um, working to tune it. It'll be a, you know, many tens of thousands. So the cryptocurrency is fast. Smart contracts are slow. They're a few a second. They're, they're not all very many. And so you can do anything in a smart contract, but it's not the same as a native service. And every ledger has this issue. Smart contracts, now some of them emphasize smart contracts and make them faster, but still a native service is faster.